this is Pastor Larry Allison, Gospel Light, Free Will Baptist Church in Bonterre, Missouri. And uh, listen, we've come together this morning uh, to spend some more time with God, daily with God. Uh, all this week we've been going, we began Monday leading up progressively to the cross, uh, the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. We saw on Monday, Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. It was there he prayed uh, for strength to endure the cup, the cup of not just dying, but the cup of bearing our sins, the sins of the world. Uh, Tuesday, we saw Peter, and we saw his denial. He followed Jesus, but he followed afar off uh, to just see what was going to take place. He warmed himself at the enemy's fire. He was uh, there, of course, with the wrong crowd, and uh, ultimately, we we saw him deny the Lord Jesus Christ, curse and denied him openly. Uh, thank God for forgiveness. So glad that the Lord cleanses us even when we fail him, when we ask. Uh, Wednesday, we saw Jesus or Barabbas. We saw Pilate before the crowd, and he was to release one prisoner. Of course, the crowd said to release Barabbas. Uh, and what, what would he do with Jesus? And they all cried out, crucify him crucify him. And then yesterday we looked at a decision that was made at the cross. The same decisions I believe that even today are being made at the cross uh, of Calvary. That's kind of the crossroads when we're confronted with the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We saw one thief. He mocked the Lord. Even in his last breaths, he was still mocking God. And the other thief we saw, he come to himself he said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said, today, today, I like that, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And of course, he won the victory. He trusted Christ. Uh, this morning, uh, yesterday, with that, we read Matthew's account of the crucifixion. Uh, this morning, we're going to go to the book of John, John chapter 19. So get your Bible, follow along with me, if you would, please, the book of John chapter 19, and the, the, the main thought of this morning's devotion is this thought, it is finished. That was the final words of Jesus as he hung on the cross, and we're going to look at that just a little bit uh, this morning. I hope you're there now, John chapter 19. Uh, follow with me. I'm going to read it. It's a little bit lengthy, but this is uh, John's account of the crucifixion. Beginning in verse 16, John chapter 19, verse 16. Here's what the Bible says. Then delivered he, therefore, unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him, on either side one, and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priests, the Jews, to Pilate, write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. And Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart, and also his coat. And now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. Then said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it. Whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture did they cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Verse 25, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple, standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. And then saith he to the disciple, uh, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. And that disciple was John. 
And after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. And when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, listen to this, when Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. All that Jesus went through on the cross of Calvary, uh, the pain, the suffering, uh, the beating, the crown of thorns, the mockery, and we, we find some of the statements he made from the cross, uh, even concerning the thief, one of salvation. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And now we find his very, very final words on the cross before his last breath leaves his body. His heart beats the last beat, and he gives up the ghost, and he's dead. And those words, of course, were, it is finished. Jesus had paid our sin debt in full. He had shed his blood. It was a bloody sacrifice. The book of Hebrews tells us, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. It was a bloody sacrifice. There are those today that would even like to take the hymn songs out of our hymn books that have the, the, the sings about the blood. There's power in the blood. And when I see the blood, and there are all, a lot of songs speak of the blood of Christ Jesus. Listen, they say it's, it's a gory religion. It's a, it's a bloody song. It, it needs to be removed. I, I'm going to tell you something. It, it, it was a bloody sacrifice, but it was by his precious blood we were forgiven of our sins. We were saved by his blood that he shed on the cross. And when Jesus cried those final words, it is finished, it absolutely meant our sin debt was paid in full. The scripture even uh, would tell us the veil of the temple was rent in two. In, in, in the Old Testament, in the, uh, the tabernacle, we know there was, you could go into the, the first room that were the, the candle and various things was the showbread. But the priest once a year could go into the Holy of Holies and there was this great veil that covered the Holy of Holies. No one could enter in. I mean, within there was the pres the very presence of God, uh, the mercy seat. I uh, understand God's presence within that holy of holies, and man could not go in there. But listen, when Jesus died on the cross, he cried, it is finished. And that miraculously, I mean miraculously, the veil of the temple was tore into from the top to the bottom, and now the way to God's presence is open for all co to come. Jesus opened the door of salvation for us. He said, it is finished. Now, what they really meant back then, to tetelestai is the word that was used, to tetelestai. And there's really several meanings to that word, how it was really used, uh, the word to tetelestai. Uh, it is said a Greek painter, when he would do a sculpture or a painting, and he would work and work and work on it, and, and if it got to the point where he thought it was absolutely uh, he was satisfied. It, w it was complete. It was perfect in every way. He would stand back and look at his masterpiece and say, to tell a sty. But I got to tell you, very rarely uh, was the Greek sculptor or the Greek painter satisfied. It had to be absolutely perfect in every way. Uh, it, it was a word that was used um, if you had a piece of property You've been making payments on that property, and we all know what that's about in our lifetime. Purchase a house, you've got a deed, you make payments, and when you make that very, very last payment, and that must have surely felt good for some of you that have paid your houses off at this point, that last payment is made, you know what, they would stamp back then on the deed to tell a sty, to tell a sty. You know what that meant? It meant that the payment had been made in full. It had been satisfied. There was no more uh, payment necessary. It was now paid in full. The deed to the property is now free and clear. It was also a word that was used 
uh, in, in other ways, I, I believe I even saw where it was used if a prisoner, a prisoner was in prison. He was there paying a debt, a, a debt to society that he owed. And when that prisoner was released, he was given a document that would say to tell us die. His, his debt to society, his prison term is now complete. And so he would always, if questioned, he had that document. It was proof that his sin debt was paid in full as far as the government was concerned. Uh, the, the one definition I really liked, back then when they would go into battle and, and various armies would be for, fighting against various armies and there was always runners, uh, the king would be back in the city and he would be watching for the runner to come and the runner would come. Th these runners would come and they would let the, the king uh, know how the battle was going how it was going, you know, we're winning or, or we're, we're not doing well or whatever was going on, the runner would take care of that. And when the battle would get to the place where, I mean, victory was absolute, I mean, there was no way the enemy uh, could come back. There was no way the enemy could make a reinforcement and, and, and come back. Listen, when, when, the, when the battle was completely won and the victory was, was a success, a total success, that runner could be heard crying out as he come to tell us die, to tell us die. Hey, it is finished. The battle is over. The victory has been won. And I tell you today, when Jesus cried those words on the cross, it is finished. Our sin debt was paid in full. Someone, someone asked a preacher one time, and I forgot the uh, the preacher's name was many years ago. What must I do to be saved? And the preacher said, there's nothing you can do. He says, you mean it's too late? It's too late for me uh, to have salvation? He said, no, listen, as far as doing something to be saved, Jesus already did that on the cross. When he declared it is finished, your sin debt was paid in full. It is finished. <laughs> Victory has been won. But what you must do, the preacher told him, is now believe. Now repent. Now trust Christ. Accept the atonement. Accept the victory that Jesus already paid for back there on Calvary's Hill. Understand today what a word that is. The victory has been won. And those, those of you that are watching that are Christians, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, the day you got saved, the day you accepted the blood atonement of Jesus. That day, as we, as we said just the other day, Jesus or Barabbas, we was the Barabbas in that picture. We was the guilty one. We was the sinner. We was the one that deserved death and judgment. But Jesus took our place. And then in his final breaths, he declares, it is finished. Paid in full. The victory has been won. The enemy is defeated. It's finished. I saw this. It says this. Lifted up was he to die. It is finished was his cry. Now in heaven exalted high. Hallelujah. What a Savior. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What a Savior. Isaiah said he shall be called wonderful. What a wonderful Savior we have today. God bless you. Uh, look to the Lord today. People need the Lord. And I'm glad today that well, we're not saved by works. Uh, you could have all the money in the world. You could not buy your salvation. You could work from now until your last breath doing good things and trying to be a good person and still die a sinner and go to a devil's hell. But I'm glad there was one named Jesus, the Savior, the Son of God, who shed his blood and finally said, it's finished, and the victory was won. Would you trust him? Would you believe him today? We, we surely hope that you will. Have prayer with me. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the scripture this morning that is so very clear about the high cost of salvation, all the suffering that Jesus went through, the pain that he endured, and uh, the greatest burden of all, bearing our sins, the sins of the world, as he died there on the cross. And then, Lord, we saw those final words. 
It is finished. We're thankful that Lord Jesus, that that dying on the cross of the Son of God, him paying the price for our sins, Father, we're thankful that that satisfied you. And now redemption is open for us. As that veil of the temple was tore from the top to the bottom, and now we have access to the Holy of Holies. Lord, we can come before the very throne of grace, and it's there we can obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Lord, I pray, bless someone today that's listening to this that may need salvation. I pray they'll turn from sin, ask forgiveness, and trust Christ right now. Lord, I pray for my church family on this Good Friday. And now we're quickly approaching Easter Sunday. And Lord, today we're so grateful to know that we're saved. We thank you for the victory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Uh, you have a good day. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow.